بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al-Imran are from the descendants of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Al-Imran are the family of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. And that's the family of Zakaria alayhi salam and the family of Yahya alayhi salam. They are from the same family, the household of Al-Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah chose Adam, Nuh, the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran above all people, offspring one of the other. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. And one day the wife of Imran, she used to pray. These were very pious people, very, very pious people. The wife of Imran, he, she, she used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never losing hope. It is reported that one day she saw a bird giving a little bit of food, bringing some food and flying in to feed the little chicklet. And when the bird put the food into the beak of its little baby and the wind blew, it took its wing and it covered its own baby. And she felt the desire to have a child at that age. She said, Ya Allah, grant me a child. Ya Allah, we are serving you. This is my husband. He is leading the people in prayer and so on. Ya Allah, bless us with some goodness. And she continued praying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded her call. But she had made a promise. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Remember the time when the wife of Imran had conceived. She then made a pledge to us to say, Ya Allah, I am dedicating the child who is in my womb for your service completely. The child will not be doing anything else besides your service. Specifically, that means that this child will serve in the masjid. Which masjid? Al Masjid Al Aqsa. In that time, they used to have men. They were devoted to the serving of the masjid. The wife of Imran, she was not thinking in terms of dunya at all. She wanted her child to go to the service in the Masjid Al-Aqsa. When she delivered her child, she said, Oh my Lord, I have given birth to a female child. And females were not traditionally allowed to serve in the Masjid. It was only for men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah knows better what she delivered. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And the male is not like the female. What does this mean? This means that, Whatever male you would have delivered, that male will not be better than the female that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Because the female that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you is the best of the woman in the world. She doesn't know, but Allah knows better. All what she knows is that she delivered a female. But Allah knows who this female is. And this female is Maryam alayhi salam. The wife of Imran, she is saying, I have given her the name Maryam, Mary. Who was this Mary? The mother of Jesus. May peace be upon him. She was now born. And this is what her mother had said. Subhanallah. I have given her the name Maryam. And Ya Allah, I seek your protection for her and for her progeny, for her offspring to come from Shaitan the accursed. It is reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, when a child is born, shaitan comes and poke the child. He's jealous. So the child cries. So this is the, the interpretation religiously of why the child cries as soon as they're born. Obviously, from a medical aspect, there are other reasons, but the child is pricked. There were two, only two, whom that did not happen to. One was Mary and one was Jesus. Maryam, alayhi salam, may peace be upon her. And the other one was Isa, alayhi salam, may peace be upon him. Because the mother had already asked Allah to protect them from shaitan and Allah gave them that particular dua. The only woman mentioned by name in the Quran is the mother of Jesus. The only woman that has a chapter named after her in the Quran is the mother of Jesus. What an honor for her that Allah told her, you are the greatest woman that Allah has chosen over all of the world. What an honor that we as Muslims have to believe. Now what had happened? There was a problem as she was born. There was a problem in that whilst she was pregnant, the father passed away. Who was the father? Imran, the Sheikh, the great Sheikh. He passed away. When he passed away and the child was born an orphan. So Maryam was an orphan. Mary, may peace be upon her. She wanted to fulfill the promise for the child. There was a debate who should take care 
of this child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you were not there when they had this debate and they drew lots as to who should look after this child Maryam, who should bring her up, under whose care. So the priests and the others, the religious people and the pious, they said, no, we all want, each one was claiming the right. Let us draw lots. What happened? When they were quarreling, who should take care of Maryam? Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for one man out of the whole family to take care of her, which is Zakaria alayhi salam, who was the prophet of the time. The majority of the scholars say that Maryam is the sister-in-law of Zakaria. Some other scholars say that she is his niece. So there is a bit of a difference of opinion here. But we know that they are relatives. You know what Zakaria used to do? Zakaria used to be the Imam of the house of Allah. And he used to spend the majority of the time there. And in order for him to take care of Maryam, he had to place her with him all the time in the house of Allah. Now there was something strange. They had kept her as she was growing up in the room known as a mihrab is a little corner of worship. Every time Zakaria alayhi salam went there, she was engaged always in acts of worship in remembrance from a very, very young age. And she used to clean and she used to keep the place tidy. And she was a person who was dedicated for the service of this place of worship. Very, very pious woman, woman of the highest levels, but she was still a young girl. Every time Zakaria alayhi salam went, he would find something amazing. She had fruit that was not from the season they were in. So the fruit of summer was found with her in winter as fresh as ever. And the fruit in winter was found with her in summer as fresh as ever. And these are the things that were happening frequently. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whenever Zakaria would go and visit her, he would find with her risk. So it's not once or twice. It's many times, frequently. And she is there in the room and this risk is coming to her. So Zakaria alayhi salam asked her, where is this risk coming from? He is wondering, who is bringing you this? I am the one who is taking care of you. And this is strange because this fruit, it's impossible to have in Jerusalem in this time of the year. What was the response of Maryam alayhi salam? She said, this is from Allah. And then she told him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the ones he wants without any limits. She is giving him this wonderful lesson in risk. See what she said. Allah will give you without any limits. Allah gives sustenance to whomsoever he wishes without account. Allah doesn't take into account that it is summer and it is winter. If he wants, he can give you anything. Now these were miracles that were happening at the time. What makes Maryam so special, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she's an example for those who believe, wa Maryam abnata Imran. He doesn't say Maryam, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. He just says Maryam ibn Atu Imran. What is the wisdom of that? That Maryam's greatness is not necessarily tied to Isa alayhi salam. She's not just a woman who's great because she happened to be the mother of a prophet. She's recognized as a woman who perfected her faith as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned her. She was great because of who she was. And in fact, her name is even mentioned more than the name of Isa alayhi salam in the Quran because of how great she was. And this young girl loved to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This woman ate, you know, breathed, drank the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even as she was a young girl. And so Zakaria Islam would come, find her in ibadah, find her worshiping Allah all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about various miracles that occurred when she was still very young, as she was being prepared for something very, very great to happen. When she was still quite young, growing up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message to her via the angels. And the angels told her, O oh Maryam, Allah has chosen you. O oh Maryam, Allah has chosen you and cleansed and purified you and made you above all of the women of the world. So the greatest woman to ever walk on the face of this earth is the mother of Jesus. And that is Maryam alayhi salam. Allah has made you one who will worship him alone. So you are pure in every way, purified in your reputation, 
purified in your character and conduct, but above all purified in your worship, it will not be rendered for anyone besides your maker. Therefore, O Maryam, we want to inform you and instruct you. Submit for your own Rabb, the one who made you. And find yourselves from the ones who bow down and from the ones who are prostrate solely to their maker. So Allah says, this is the news and the information of the unseen that we are giving you. We are telling you the true version of the story of Mary and Jesus and Zachariah and John and so of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after some time, she continued to worship Allah and she was very pious and she had her place of worship. There was a partition between her and those who would come from her members of her family. She was in her own corner and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And mention in the book, Mary, when she withdrew from her family to a place towards the east. And she took in seclusion from them a screen. Then we sent to her one of our angels, and he represented himself to her as a well-proportioned man. And as she is there by herself remembering Allah, a beautiful man comes, a perfect symmetrical human being. Jibreel Islam, Allah describes Jibreel Islam as a perfectly symmetrical human being. She realizes she's all alone and this beautiful man comes, and before he can even speak, she looks at him and says, أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقية. I seek refuge in Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, from you if you have any consciousness, piety, or fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, the angel, said, I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you news of a pure boy. And she said, How can I have a boy while no man has touched me? and I have not been unchaste. He said, Thus it will be. Your Lord says, It is easy for me. We will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And it is a matter decree. Jibreel, the greatest angel, visited Maryam and said to Maryam, O Maryam, we are gifting you. We are giving you glad tidings of a word and a spirit proceeding from him. And his name, the gift's name, shall be Al-Masih Isa ibn Maryam. Al-Masih is not the name, it is the title. Al-Masih is the title. And in English we say the Messiah. In Arabic, Al-Masih, it is a title. It's an adjective, it's a description. And the description here means the one who has been anointed. To anoint means to rub. Masaha means to rub. And in the previous sharia, in the classical laws before our law, this is not our law. In the other laws, the law of Moses and the previous laws, when a person wanted to convert, they would have to be anointed or rubbed with a special water. They call it holy water. And this lives to this day in the uh, ritual of baptism. When Christians baptize themselves, there is a basis in their sharia. This baptism, you rub the child uh, on the hair according to some traditions. And in the previous shari'as, each prophet would anoint the next prophet. So John the Baptist, who was the cousin of Jesus, anointed Jesus. He made Jesus the Messiah by the name of Allah, by the permission of Allah. This anointing is the Messiah. This is the Messiah, the Messiah. And the name of the child was Esau, and Esau has been Latinized to Jesus. The, the, the letter J did not exist in Aramaic. And Isa never heard the name Jesus in his whole life. If you said Jesus to Jesus, he wouldn't know you're talking to him, because J did not exist in their language. The actual name of Jesus, and this even Christians acknowledge and they understand, the real name of Jesus was closer to Esau. We say Isa, they would say Esau. When it was translated to Latin, then they said Jesus. But the actual name is Esau or Isa, the son of Mary. When the angels told Maryam, Mary, the daughter of Imran, that Allah is giving you glad tidings of a word from him. What is that word? Kun, be, and it will be. The word is kaf and nun. The instruction of Allah is between a kaf and a nun. Once those words are uttered, be, it automatically is. So we are giving you good news of a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing. She is listening. She is obviously in awe. 
She is trying to digest. She knew that Allah is preparing her for something great, but she is getting the information. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he will be honored. He will be honored in this world as well as in the next. Very honored man. He will be from amongst those very close to Allah in the life after. In the sense that in the akhirah, he will also be very, very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be speaking to people from the cradle as well as later on when he is aged and he is from amongst those who will be pious and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Maryam alayha salatu wassalam she heard this news and she understood it very carefully we Muslims believe Jesus was formed by the kun and Jesus was not the actual kun the difference between us and Christians Christians believe Jesus became the word so the word became Jesus and Jesus became the word. And so Jesus is a walking word. Jesus is the word of God. That's a Christian belief. We say Jesus was conceived at the word because of the word. Jesus did not become the word of God. Jesus is a human. And when Allah said, Kun, Maryam became pregnant. So Jesus was caused by Kun and Jesus was not Kun. The circle of creation and the Qudra and power of the Creator was being closed. What do we mean? Allah has created without the involvement of a male or a female, such as Adam. The first human being was Adam. May peace be upon him. There was no male involved, no female involved. Allah said be and he was created from dust, soil and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, the second probability Allah created through a male without the involvement of a female. Who was created in that way? Hawa or Eve, may peace be upon her. Through a male, no involvement of female. Then there was every one of us. After those two, everyone who came thereafter, they were created via male and female. That's the third probability. There's one more left to close the circle to show you the power of Allah. What is that? to create via a female without the involvement of a male Allah left it for the time when Isa alayhi salam was sent the Prophet Jesus may peace be upon him he was that miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with no involvement of a male not that he was the son of Allah astaghfirullah he was not the son of God but he was a creature created miraculously by the word of Allah what was that word Allah said be and he was just like Adam was created before Allah says in the Quran the example of Jesus is that of Adam God said to him be and he was God can create him with the word so if Jesus is the son of God because he has no human father then Adam surely must have more right to being the son of God because he has no mother or father right that's the logic this is actually one of the miracles of the Quran say that he the creator is absolutely one one whom all depends while he depends upon none he begets not nor is he begotten and there is none in the creation that has any similitude to him. This is what the Quran sets forward as the statement of God. In the book of Isaiah, God said, Isaiah is my son. And he said, Abraham is even my son. And David is my son. God mentioned this not because they were born of God, but it means son means chosen, selected by God. A person dedicated to God, whom God loves and God blesses. By that definition, God had sons by the tons. He doesn't beget. That means God doesn't become pregnant, nor does God make anyone pregnant. By his command, women become pregnant. By his command, Mary became pregnant. But God doesn't beget because begetting and being begotten is a human animalistic function. In the metaphorical sense, we all are children of God, but not in a physical sense. Now coming back to the story, the angel Jibril, he came to Maryam and he blew into her. And Isa was created by the Kalima, the word, and that is Kun, Kun Fayakun. That's how Sayyidina Isa was created. So she became pregnant and it seems that her pregnancy was concealed. No one knew about it and when she felt that 
her delivery is approaching she left jerusalem and she went towards bethlehem and when she go towards bethlehem she started feeling pain of delivery so she fell down under a palm tree imagine the situation maria alayhi salam has been hide in this pregnancy for 9 months that's difficult and now she is leaving out of her town alone with no help and now she is feeling that pain and it drives her and she falls under a palm tree it was so difficult on her at that difficult moment she said would that i had died before this and had been forgotten out of sight i wish that i have died before this she was very worried why was she worried on one hand to deliver is a very big worry tension the secret is don't worry that's the secret but who doesn't worry may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all our women folk the second concern i'm going to take this child how will people receive this child i've been given responses answers i've been told who he is i know everything but these people will accuse me they'll accuse the child they might decide to do something against the child what will happen all this worry and now she is going to deliver a child and she has never been married and she knows the tongues of the people and she knows the harm that they would cause her and her family the righteous family of al imran it became so difficult on her she said i wish i have died before this and i wish that nobody has known me and i has forgotten i didn't exist at that moment of difficulty allah subhanahu wa taala provided her with sakina when things go to the level where it's unbearable for her anymore she had a voice from beneath her the mufassirin says that this voice belongs to either jibril alayhi salam or baby isa alayhi salam and this voice told her do not grieve your lord has provided a water stream under you and shake the trunk of the date palm towards you and it will let fresh ripe dates fall upon you allah subhanahu wa taala provided with water and allah subhanahu wa taala provided with dates and now we learn from this some very important lessons number 1 maryam alayhi salam just delivered a child is helpless alone and she is told to shake not the branch of the palm tree but to shake what the base of the palm tree and all of you know how solid the palm tree is if a group of men surround it and try to shake it at the base it's impossible so what's the point allah subhanahu wa taala telling maryam to shake the base of a palm tree she is not going to able to shake it but the point is that make an effort she has to do her part if you put your hands on a palm tree don't expect any dates to fall on you allah subhanahu wa taala could have made the dates fall down without her intervention but allah subhanahu wa taala wants her to do her part and that's a very very important lesson if we want the victory of allah subhanahu wa taala we have to do our part you have to take the first step allah subhanahu wa taala says in the hadith al qudsi if you walk towards me i will run towards you but you have to take the first step the ones who seek guidance they look for it allah will give it to them so maryam alayhi salam put her hand on the palm tree the fresh ripe dates fell on her fresh date rich in mineral and vitamin to this day if you have the fresh date childbirth post childbirth or even before it is very very healthy rich in iron allahu akbar something that is amazing from the quran so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so eat and drink as much as you want and thank allah be happy and be glad now maryam alayhi salam has a child with her and it's going to be very difficult on her to convince the people that this is her child and it's a word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her don't speak don't speak we will take care of you and if you see any human being say verily i have vowed a fast on to the most gracious so i shall not speak to any human being this day say that you are fasting from speaking because what will she tell the people if she tell the truth nobody is going to believe her she will tell them an angel came to me and told me that they are not going to believe her so allah subhanahu wa taala told her don't speak she now arrived it was late afternoon when she arrived with the child back to her people going back into the place where she was in seclusion holding the child at her chest 
and walking very carefully, very, very calm, relaxed. Her face was beaming with light mm -hmm. and she was looking very happy. She is holding the child, covering the child very well. The people began to see and started saying, isn't that the Mary who's supposed to be in the place of worship? Isn't she the one who's supposed to be the pious? Isn't she the one who is the descendant of the prophet Harun? And because he was so pious and she had his blood in her being from his lineage, they always reminded her, you are from the family of such a pious man. Your mother is pious. Your father is pious. Your generations, your grandfathers, it dates back all the way to Harun. They said, Oh Mary, indeed you have brought a thing that is mighty. What have you done? And then they said, Oh sister of Harun, your father was not a man who used to commit adultery. No, your mother was an unchaste woman. What have you done? So they are already accusing her. Now this was an accusation of adultery. How did you become pregnant? How did you get this child? They're all asking, they're accusing. She knew the child is going to speak. Subhanallah. I don't need to say anything today. So when she pointed to him, they looked at her. They realized she doesn't want to talk. She's now pointing at the child. Is she foolish? They said, how can we speak to a child in a cradle here? And as they were in this discussion, and they were talking to each other and talking to her and telling her, how foolish are you? You want us to talk a babe to a baby? They heard the baby say, Inni Abdullah. Indeed, I am the servant of God. Indeed, I am the servant of God, Abdullah. And he has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. And he has made me blessed wherever I am and has enjoined upon me prayer and zakah as long as I remain alive and made me dutiful to my mother and he has not made me a wretched tyrant and peace be upon me the child is still speaking subhanallah these people are baffled they are gobsmacked don't know what to say silent just watching he's saying may peace be upon me the day I was born the day I shall die the day I will be resurrected, may the peace of Allah be upon me. He is speaking. They are shocked. So how do they react? These were priests. These were rabbis. These were people who used to teach the religion watching. They had just accused someone of adultery. And what happened as they are watching, they are looking, they are hearing. There is no ways this is magic. There is no ways this is anything but a miracle. There is no ways this is anything but a sign from Allah, the creator. It is miraculous. They know the piety of this woman. They know the family. They know everything. They can see she's not worried. They can see the miracle child. They can see everything, but they are worried that if we now acknowledge this child, they are thinking future. This child is going to take the carpet from beneath our feet, pull it. And what will happen? We won't have leadership anymore. Nobody's going to follow us anymore. People will now follow him. He is going to be the boss. He's going to be above us. The best thing for us to do is from now, let us fight him from that stage. So they continued. No, we're not interested. We would like to un you to understand this is a sin. You have committed immorality. You've come with a child. This child is illegal, illegitimate. They continued accusing Maryam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we purified her. She was pure. And there, Isa alayhi salam grew up with the guardianship and the care of his mother. Of course, now father, a mother that had passion and care for his son, knowing the destiny of his son. And Isa alayhi salam grew up in Beit Lahim. And Beit Lahim is just a few kilometers away from Jerusalem. After that day that Isa alayhi salam spoke, when he was only a few days old, Isa never spoke again until he grew up like every other child grows up and start to speak in the age that every other child speaks. And his mother, she was so cautious on Isa alayhi salam from the envy of Bani Israel, especially the leaders of Bani Israel. And when Isa alayhi salam grew up and became a mature child, his mother was so afraid on Isa alayhi salam and the news started to come out about Isa and the miracle that happened on the hands of Isa. And many of the leaders, especially the religious leaders of Bani Israel, 
did not accept the tension to be taken away from them to go to a child or a mother. Bani Israel were led by corrupt leaders. Even their religious leaders were corrupt. And they wanted to protect themselves. And the news that came out that their ending and the disclosure of the corruption will take place on the hands of Isa alayhi salam. So they start to plot and plan against Isa alayhi salam. And for that, his mother used to be so cautious, so protective on Isa alayhi salam. So she used to take him away from the city many times until she went to uh, Jerusalem. And she settled in Jerusalem with Isa alayhi salam. And in Jerusalem, Bayt al-Maqdis, there's a high hill, there's food, there's fruit, and there's water there. A blessed place. There are people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says have started calling this young boy the son of God. Why was this? This was because they didn't see the father. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nay, it is not befitting for the creator to take a son, to have a begotten son. It is blaspheme to relate to the creator who only needs to say be and anything he wants to make is created automatically. It is blasphemous to relate to him to say he has a begotten son. How can they say that Allah, the most merciful, has a son? And it is not befitting for the most merciful to have a son. Allah says, this statement is so blasphemous that the skies want to tear apart. And the earth wants to explode. And the mountains want to fall prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the severity and seriousness of such a dangerous statement against the maker himself. So even the creation of Allah are bearing witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not taken a son. And they are agitated at the fact that people are saying this. Yes, he did not have a father, but Adam neither had a father nor a mother and Eve she was also created miraculously. And when it comes to Jesus, may peace be upon him, he did not have a father. That's what the Quran says. But you cannot say the son of Allah and the begotten. The word beget is so blasphemous. If you have to check the meaning of it in the Oxford Dictionary, you'd probably hide your face. May Allah protect us. How can we say that for the maker of the universe? In a young age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal had granted Isa alayhi salam the wisdom and the knowledge as he did grant Yahya alayhi salam his cousin from before. And when Isa alayhi salam reached the age of 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Injil to Isa alayhi salam. And the Injil came as a confirmation for the Torah. Isa alayhi salam himself says, I have came to confirm the law of the Torah dot by dot, jot by jot, letter by letter. This has not only been mentioned in Quran, but it is in the Bible too. Isa Islam said, I have came to confirm the law of the Torah. And after many years, Paul comes up and says, You do not have to follow the law. You do not have to keep up with the law of Torah. In fact, you have to leave it behind because that's not the religion. And they followed Paul and they leave the word of Isa, which is in the Bible of today. Subhanallah, that's why the true founder of the Christianity of today is Paul, not Isa Islam. It is not the religion of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. The Torah that was revealed to Musa alayhi salam, he said, I came to confirm what's in it and to permit some of the things that were forbidden on you. In the Torah, the Torah is so strict, there are matters, there are matters and things that are forbidden on Bani Israel that were too harsh and tough on them. When Isa came with the Injil, the Injil in which what Allah revealed had permitted some of those forbidden things. Of course, the things that Allah Azza wa Jal permitted on Bani Israel at that time is not the major things like Allah Azza wa Jal allowed them to uh, start stealing or Allah Azza wa Jal allowed them to commit adultery. No, but there are some matters that Allah Azza wa Jal makes a haram or one nation halal to us. And Allah says, وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ And a messenger to the children of Israel. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the Ambiya, the prophets were sent to their people specifically. And I was sent to whole of the world. Isa ibn Maryam salam here says, I was sent to Bani Israel. The God Almighty sent Isa ibn Maryam salam specifically to Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ, Al-Masih, 
over 25 times in the Quran. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it a fundamental pillar of our faith. For he said in the famous hadith in Sahih Muslim, whoever testifies La ilaha illallah and I am the messenger of Allah and Isa is the Ruhullah wa kalimatuhu alqaha ila Maryam shall enter Jannah. So believing in Jesus as a Muslim is a fundamental requirement to be a Muslim. He was so compassionate. He was such a beautiful man. He was so loving. He spoke to people with so much love and passion. He really wanted them to earn paradise. And he was such a beautiful human being. Not only was he a person who was very good looking, but at the same time, calm, relaxed individual with qualities that were super subhanallah. He got the Torah. He got the goodness. He started preaching. And as he started preaching, he always told the people, our maker, the one we worship, the Supreme Allah is the one who made us. He is my Rabb and he is your Rabb. My maker, your maker. The one who protects me, the one who protects you. The one who provides for me, the one who provides for you. So worship him alone and nobody else. Never did Jesus, may peace be upon him, call anybody to worship him. He always said, worship the maker who made you. That is what all the messengers said. Every messenger came with exactly the same message when it comes to belief. So when we Muslims, when we bow down or we put our heads on the ground, a lot of people think we might be worshiping a black box in Mecca. Some people think we're worshiping the Prophet Muhammad. Some people think we're worshiping this and that. No, we are worshiping the one who made us. That is the one for whom I put my head on the ground. This is why Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Jesus told his people, O children of Israel, I am a messenger unto you. And I confirm the message of the Torah that is between my hands. And I'm giving you good news of a messenger who is going to come after me whose name shall be the praised one subhanallah when the clear signs came to them later on they said this is magic jesus may peace be upon him warned his people and gave them glad tidings at the same time of a messenger to come after he was known as a comforter and he was known as the bearer of praise the praised one you take a look at muhammad is from the root of ahmad hamida to praise so he is the praised one and he came with exactly the same message. When we analyze Bible, we can see the mentioning of this comforter. Even though today's Bible is changed so much, we can still see the mentioning of this comforter in Bible. And there are many places Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is mentioned. Some places even his name is mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jal not only appeared on the hands of Isa alayhi salam, the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to appear miracles on the hands of Isa alayhi salam. Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam would bring some clay and mold it into the shape of a bird. He would breathe into it and the bird would become alive. He would put his hand on the blind and he would see. He would put his hand on the person who will not speak. He will speak. He would heal the leper. He would put his hand on the dead. The dead would wake up alive. See the amazing miracles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. And this was bi'idhinillah. He says by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah. He says and I bring the dead to alive by Allah's leave. And I inform you of what you eat. And I tell you what you are hiding in your homes. Therein is a sign for you if you believe. Subhanallah, with all of these unbelievable, Subhanallah, amazing miracles, nevertheless, Bani Israel did not believe. There was a group that accepted him as a messenger and the group that rejected him as a messenger and they began or they continued to say that this is an illegitimate child born outside of wedlock. May Allah protect us. So those who accepted his message were known as Nasara. Nasara meaning Christians, those who accepted Jesus Christ. And those who did not, they remained Jewish. But according to us, the prophet of the time is who you are supposed to be behind. So if we were alive at the time of Jesus, what were we supposed to have been? 
followers of Jesus. If we were alive at the time of Moses, may peace be upon him, who were we supposed to have followed? The Prophet Moses. And if we are now here at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are we supposed to be following? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have Musa, we have Isa, and we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon all of them. But the Jews stop at Musa alayhi salam. The peak of their era was the time of Solomon, Sulaiman alayhi salam. And when it comes to the Christians, the peak of their era was the time of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. They don't accept any messenger thereafter. They say he was na'udhu billah, God or the son of God or a party or a part of a trinity. Islam rejects all that. Islam says no, he was an upright messenger who came with miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People in the time of Isa used to be in the field of medicine and healing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Isa miracles to challenge them in what they do best. And they are not going to be able to bring similar miracles, not only in their time, but until the time of judgment. Even now, if you are able to cure the blind and the leper, it's never gonna be in the way that Isa did it. We might be able to cure some of the diseases that Isa was curing, but it's never gonna be the same way. It's an absolute miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Isa started to see the disability and disbelief from them, not many people start to follow him. On the contrary, the religious leaders from Bani Israel start to preach against Isa and make rumors on Isa alayhi salam and say bad things about Isa alayhi salam to turn people away from Isa alayhi salam. When Isa start to see the kufr, the disobedience and the disbelief of his people towards him, he said, who are the supporters to me? Who are the supporters? Who are my gospels? Who will stand by me? So there were a certain number of people. Some narrations say 17 people. But the bulk of narration saying there were 12 people, the Hawariyun, the disciples. The Quran says they came up and they said, we believe in Allah. We will assist the cause. You write our names or bear witness that we are from amongst those who are submitters unto our maker and creator. That Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, instructed his disciples to fast for a month. And they fasted. And when they fasted, they now said, you know, we all have fasted, mashallah, for a month. You finish the prescribed time. You praise Allah, declare his greatness for what he has given you. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order that you may be thankful, Allah has given you the day of Eid. The day of Eid is a day of happiness. So here, the disciples asked him, Oh Jesus, oh Isa, is it possible for your Rabb to bring forth a laid tablecloth from heaven? For us, we fasted the whole month. Now we need something from Allah. So Isa alayhi salam, Allah says, he said, if you are true believers, be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They continued asking him. They said, no, 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 we don't mean bad. We are believers, but we would like it for a reason. Here's the reason. We want to eat from it. Some food from heaven. We want to eat from it. We want our hearts to be more at ease that really it is true. What we have asked you, you have brought it for us. We will believe, we will be the witnesses and so on. Now it is reported that some of these disciples, their belief within their heart was not very strong. They were still a little bit shaky because the whole community was against them. Isa alayhi salam made a dua. Jesus may peace be upon him supplicated his creator. And he says, oh my maker, send for us a laid tablecloth of food so that it can come to us as a point of happiness, a day of joy, so that the first and the last of us can all eat from it. Let it be a sign and it will be a sign for those who are here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, I'm sending it to you. Here it comes. Subhanallah. The tablecloth, Allah says, we have laid it completely and we're sending it down. If after I send that laid tablecloth, and you have all enjoyed the food and seen what it was all about. Then if anyone still disbelieves, I will punish him a severe punishment. Let him know that. So Allah sent the laid tablecloth. MashaAllah, it is reported that they ate. You know, in the testaments, they speak of a last supper. Whether or not it was that, Allah knows best. But they ate and it is reported that so many people ate. The food was not depleted. This was a sign. It was a miracle. Thousands of people according to some narrations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this in the Quran. Now the news start to come out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this miracle on the hands of Isa alayhi salam. 
and people start to become Muslims. More and more people following Isa alayhi salam. This is becoming a big problem now. Many of the religious leaders are losing customers. They're all going to Isa. And the more Isa is calling is the more people are following Isa. And these people that were with them one day, they are turning against him. There's got to be some solution. So they planned and plotted. And the only solution is to vanish Isa. What did they do? They got together and planned and went to the king at that time. He was a Roman king assigned by the Roman emperor in Jerusalem. And they went to him saying that there is a man. His name is Isa Jesus. He claims to be the king of Bani Israel. In other words, he's trying to overtake you. So it's either you get rid of him before he gets rid of you. The children of Israel were a minority within the Roman Empire. They did not have political power. Political power is in the hands of the Romans. These are the kings and the emperors. These are the politicians and the, the police and the bureaucrats are all pagans. They don't believe in any right God. They are idol worshippers. And the Bani Israel are a minority. And now within their community, there is this figure called Jesus Christ preaching something new. They became so frustrated that they complained to the authorities about Jesus Christ. And they essentially turned their backs on their own prophet. Because Jesus is one of them. He is of the children of Israel. He is their kith and kin. They turned their backs on Jesus and they attempted to have him executed by the Roman authorities. They said he is a political agitator. They said he's speaking against the emperor. Even though Jesus did not come to cause any agitation or problem. He was a peaceful person. He didn't come to spread war and hatred. But his own people falsely accused him of that which he was, he was free of. And they complained to the Roman emperor. The court case was done and the verdict was given that he will be essentially crucified, which was the Roman way of killing people. So the decree was issued that Sayyidina Isa salam, should be executed in public by carrying him over the cross and putting a crown over his head. Not a crown of gold or silver, but thorns. They would make a cross out of wood. Then they would nail the hands and feet to the cross. They would hit nails in the hands and the feet and hang you on the cross and you would bleed from this injury and you could stay for hours and hours in the sun on that cross, dying a very slow death. So it is a very gruesome way of execution. So the law was decreed that Isa should be executed in this way. So the Roman soldiers came to capture Sayyidina Isa But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And they disbelievers planned to kill Isa. And Allah planned to, and Allah is the best of those who plan. They think that they are concealing their plan, and nobody knows their plan. But there is one who knows their plan, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the best of the planners. So they plans and Allah plans, and the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what will go through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Isa alayhi salam, Allah says, I will elevate you to me and I will purify and clear you of those who disbelieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They said in boast, We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they neither killed him nor crucified him. It was only made to appear to them so. And those who differ therein are full of doubts. They have no knowledge whatsoever, only making assumptions. They certainly did not kill him. Rather Allah raised him up to himself. And Allah is exalted in power all wise. This is what Quran says. But Quran did not mention about who died on the cross. Some of the Mufassirin explained about what happened. There are many narrations. But we are mentioning here main two narrations. One narration says, When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to elevate Isa alayhi salam to the heavens, Isa alayhi salam came out to his disciples and there was 12 of them. He came out from his house. His hair was dripping water and then he said, one of you will disbelieve in me 12 times. And we'll talk about this man. He will disbelieve in me 12 times after he believed in me. And then he said, which one of you is willing to look like me? Which one of you is willing to take my looks and then he'll be with me like this in the paradise. He'll be with me in the same level in the paradise. This is an indication 
is given to them that the one that's going to look like me is going to suffer. And is going to go through a lot of hardships. So which one of you is willing to look like me and he'll be with me in the same level? Which means in the paradise. So the youngest one among them said me. So Isa looked at him. The youngest one from all of them, he said, not you, sit down. And then he repeated that again. Which one of you is willing to accept to look like me? And he'll be with me in the same level. And the same level in the paradise. So the same young man got up. And he said, me. So Isa alayhi salam said, then it's you. At that second, and the disciples are around, this man that looks his original looks, turned into the looks of Isa alayhi salam. And at that moment, Isa alayhi salam was elevated to the heavens. And the soldiers of the Roman king came into the house of Isa alayhi salam or their gathering and they took that look alike. And then back then the East crucifixion is putting someone on a cross and hammering nails in their body and leave him like this for the whole day. And they took the one that looks like Isa alayhi salam. The soldiers of the king at that time captured the disciples of Isa alayhi salam. Many of them fled and one of them was captured and disbelieved in Isa 12 times. Every time they say to him, are you one of his followers? He says, no, 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 for 12 times as Isa alayhi salam mentioned. We neither approve these narrations nor reject these narrations. The other narration says, and I'm mentioning to you one narration. So when the people came, they wanted to know, where is Jesus? He was nowhere to be found. Where is he? We want to know. Now, the disciples knew where he was. There was one of the disciples. The name given is Judas. Allah knows best who exactly he was, but one of the disciples. And he decided to become a traitor. In fact, Shaitan overtook him. The devil overtook him and he led the men of this king and the Jewish people who were behind wanting to murder Jesus, may peace be upon him, to the room where he was. And there was a little window. So as this one man goes in to confirm that Jesus is in the room, who was he? He was the disciple. They sent him in. You go and confirm that he is in the room. They, this man goes into the room and he is now a traitor. Yet he's supposed to be a disciple. He goes into the room and he is asking Isa alayhi salam. He's just confirming that he's there. And at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the face of Judas. So it became the face of Jesus. And Allah took Jesus away through that window, gone up into the heavens in the proper form of the human being that he was. Taken up ascension of Jesus. He was taken up completely well before anybody could harm him. Allah says at the beginning, Wassalamu alayya. Peace be upon me. They won't harm me at all. Nothing. So Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him, was not harmed at all. Nothing. He was taken up and the face of this traitor was made to be the face of Jesus. So now he was taking long to come out. A little while later, he comes out. These people are looking. They see Jesus. They go and hold him. He says, hey, I am Judas. No ways. So if you are Judas, where is Jesus? And if you are Jesus, where is Judas? They went back in. So they didn't know. They were also a little bit confused. But facially, they knew this is Jesus. And this man is continuing to say, I am not Jesus. I am Judas. They took him. They put a huge cross for him. They nailed him into the cross. And according to one narration, they, they took a crown of thorns as a means of disgrace for him. And they placed it on his head. And they were happy telling everyone we have crucified Jesus. But Allah knows Jesus was taken well before anybody could harm him. Regardless of who was hanged on the cross, it is not Isa bin Maryam alayhi salam. That is what we are sure about. It was not Isa bin Maryam alayhi salam. It was not Jesus Christ peace be upon him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ They neither killed Jesus nor did they crucify him. But rather, it was made to appear to them so. It looked that Jesus had been crucified, but he wasn't crucified. All of the Christians who are differing amongst themselves, they are in doubt. They don't have certainty. So where is Jesus right now? May peace be upon him. He is alive. 
He is in heaven. We believe he is going to come back. Indeed, he will be one of the signs of the coming of the hour. He will come down just before the hour. During the journey of Miraj, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam met Isa ibn Maryam alaihi salam in the second heaven. Isa ibn Maryam alaihi salam is a sign for mankind. And subhanallah, the most amazing personality is Isa ibn Maryam alaihi salam. His birth was miraculous. It was an amazing birth. His miracles are amazing, giving life and healing leper and healing blind, so and so. The way he was elevated was amazing. It was a miracle in itself. So his whole life, subhanallah, is an amazing life. And that's why the personality of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam is the most controversial. The main three religions, Islam, Christianity and Judaism, the pivotal point of dispute is on Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. The difference between the three religions the point of contention is on the reality of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam the Jews say that he was not a prophet of Allah and he was an illegitimate son and they say that he was not a messiah and they are expecting messiah to come the christian says that Jesus was born from the virgin mary and he is the son of Allah and then the muslims come and say Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam was born from the Virgin Mary and he is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the righteous, one of the Ulu Lazma min al-Rasul, one of the top five messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a partner and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a son. So the difference focuses on Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam and because of this contention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him down again to solve it. Because of this dispute that arose it is he Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam who will come down at the end of time and solve this once and for all he will descend near the white eastern minaret of Damascus a man of medium height reddish white in complexion hairs will be long up to the shoulder and his hair look like wet looking as water dropping from head but it is not actually wet wearing two yellow garments leaning on the wings of two angels this is how isa ibn maryam alayhi salam descends and what else he will do he will kill the antichrist the false messiah al masih ad dajjal he will break the cross he will kill the swine the pigs he will abolish the jizya the tax taken from the non muslims by muslim government break the cross meaning what why he is breaking the cross it means that i was in crucified look at me why does he kill the swine or kill the pigs what is the symbolism behind it the symbolism is that i never told you to break the law i never told you to break the commandments of god and he will rule the world and his time money will be in abundance nobody accepts charity and all the people of the book the real christians and jews will believe in him before his death He will be the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He will follow the laws of the final revelation of Almighty God, which is glorious Quran. And in some narration it says he will rule for 40 years and he will marry and have children. And he will be buried near to the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When we talk about the end series inshallah we will discuss about the second coming of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam in detail Now the Christians believe he died on the cross as a redemption for our sins we Muslims say it is an injustice for us to say there is a lot of adultery a lot of armed robbery a lot of sin so in order for us to absolve ourselves from all this let's pick the most pious from amongst us and crucify him in that corner and inshallah that will mean all our sins are expiated that is injustice the gravest injustice is to punish a person who did not commit the sin so as muslims we believe it is blasphemous to think that the almighty would punish someone on another person's behalf if he was a son of god or as some of them say part of god or some of them say god himself so god was crucified what's going to happen to all of us allahu akbar and this is why we say that that is another blasphemy to call him a part of god to call him a son of god to call him these names that is all blasphemous to the real maker the one who created all of us 
instead of saying, Oh Jesus, you say, Oh my maker, redeem me. Oh my maker, forgive me. Oh my maker, when I return to you, have mercy on me. The minute you say, Oh Jesus, have mercy on me. There's a very, very big risk. I like to tell my Christian friends, you know what? You are either right or wrong, but I'm always right. I say, Oh my maker, forgive me. Oh, you who is the owner of forgiveness, forgive me. Oh, you whom I'm going to return to, have mercy on me the day I return to. I have never taken a risk. The minute you say, oh Jesus, forgive my sin, you're taking a very big risk. So you have to ask yourself, look, we need to believe, but believe what? Believe without risk because you live once, only once. So if you are to risk it once, it's over. May Allah forgive us. Now you find another statement. People say, Jesus' blood was spilled for you. May Allah forgive us. As we said, it encourages people to commit sin, number one. Number two, it means the Almighty is more unjust than the tyrant rulers of today who punish innocent people. That is another piece of blasphemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of judgment, there is going to be a statement between Allah, the maker, and between this messenger, Jesus. Allah says, we will ask Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him on the day of judgment. Did you tell the people to worship yourself and your mother besides the maker and the creator besides me who made you? And Jesus is going to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory be to you, O my maker, all high. It is impossible for me to utter any word besides that which you instructed me to utter. I did not tell them that. I didn't tell them to worship myself, to worship my mother. Had I said it, O oh Allah, you would have known it. You know everything about me. You know what is hidden in me. I do not have that knowledge which you possess, Ya Allah. You know the unseen completely. Then he continues to say, I only told them what you instructed to tell me to tell them. And that is worship Allah who made me and who made you. Worship the one who made me and who made you. That is the one you will call him the worshipped one. In the Hebrew language, they use the term Eloha or Elohim. To refer to Allah, which means the worshipped one. Subhanallah. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jesus said, Whoever associates partnership with the maker will definitely end up in hellfire and will lose the heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Then he says, Oh Allah, if you want to punish them, they are your worshippers. You own that. Allah made. He can do what he wants. So he's saying, Ya Allah, if you want to punish them, they are your worshippers. And if you want to forgive them, Ya Allah, if you forgive them, you are indeed all powerful, all wise. You know, Allah is the one whom he knows he can punish, but over and above that, he still forgives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, towards the end of his life, showed a lot of concern about something. So much so that one day he got up and very, very strongly warned all of us. And you'll find this hadith in most books of hadith. He looks at his companions and he says, I fear for you, O my people. Do not go beyond the limits with me. Just like the Christians, the devil got hold of them and they went beyond the limits with Jesus. Always refer to me as Abdullahi wa Rasuluhu, the slave of Allah and his messenger. So that you remember, I am not a God. I am not a part of God. I am not a part of a Trinity and I am not someone who is going to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am a slave of Allah, a messenger who has come to you. Be warned. Do not raise my status higher than it actually is. It's already the highest. There were five messengers who were the highest. Who were they? Jesus Christ. May peace be upon him. The Prophet Abraham, the Prophet Moses, the Prophet Noah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the beginning, Christianity split up into such a wide spectrum. And right from the beginning, controversy begins amongst his own followers. That us Muslims, we have never had this problem in our religion. From the beginning, Christianity began to differ. Who is Jesus? What is his relationship with God? What is the role of the law? And you had an entire spectrum of opinion. One spectrum and one group is the group that we say were the real Christians. That group, we still have references to them. There were groups that are now called Jewish Christians. This is the name given to them. They're Jewish Christians. They were Christians who believed in Jesus, but who followed the law. And they believed in Jesus as the Messiah, not as God, not as the Son of God. 
of these groups is the Ebionites. The Ebionites. The Ebionites are an early Christian group. They didn't believe in the Trinity. They didn't believe in redemption. They didn't believe that Jesus uh, died on the cross. They actually believed that Jesus is the Messiah, not the Son of God. And they followed the laws of Musa. But they were persecuted by the other Christians and they fizzled out. Also, in early Christianity, we had a group called the Nazarenes. And from that, we, the Muslims, get Nasara, the Nazarenes. The Nazarenes are another early Christian group. They too believe Jesus is the Messiah, not God. And they followed the law of Musa. And you had other groups as well. No time to get into all of them. All of these, they were people who had other versions of Christianity. But what happened? Very briefly two primary figures that every Muslim should be aware of. Where did modern Christianity come from? Two primary individuals. Number one, Paul. Paul was an early convert to Christianity who never met Jesus. He says he met him in a dream, but he never actually met Jesus before in when Jesus was walking on this earth. And Paul began to preach a very different version of Christianity. Paul began to preach that Jesus was not just the Messiah, he was the Son of God. Paul also began to preach that Jesus, you don't have to follow the law to believe in Jesus. Belief in Jesus substitutes the law. If you believe in Jesus, you are saved. And Paul also began to preach that Jesus' message is for all of humanity, not just the children of Israel. These were the three main things that Paul introduced that Jesus never said. And the second figure is the figure of Constantine, the Roman emperor who died 337 CE, i.e. around 250 years before our Prophet So for 300 years, Christianity was a minority tradition in the Roman pagan empire. Christians were persecuted. Christians were killed by the Roman pagans until the Roman emperor at the time by the name of Constantine decided to convert to this obscure religion that less than 3% of his followers of his kingdom followed. Small religion. But which version did he convert to? He decided to convert to a version that was still somewhat similar to his previous pagan beliefs. And he adopted a version of Christianity that taught a trinity belief. Three gods. Even though there were Christian sects that did not believe in three gods. He adopted a version of Christianity that had a father figure and a son figure and a redeeming figure. And there are many parallels in paganism to this. And even the image of Jesus with a halo on top. And this is very similar to early pre-Christian paganism. So Constantine adopts a version of Christianity that was similar to his own beliefs. And then he makes it the official version. So much so, anybody who disagrees with that version shall be persecuted and exiled. So he banned any other Christianity other than his Christianity. And that became the Council of Nicaea and the Nicene Creed. And one thing led to another until it became the dominant. And then it became the only version of Christianity in the entire uh, world. We have bits and pieces of other Christians remaining until the time of Salman al-Farsi, until the time of other people like the emperor of Najashi, Negus. He appeared to follow versions of Christianity that were non-Constantine, but eventually all other versions of Christianity were wiped out and only our Prophet wasallam came preaching the true Christianity. And that is Jesus is the Messiah. He is not the Son of God. And Jesus came to fulfill the law. And brothers and sisters, of course, we disagree with Christians theologically, yet the Quran also praises the sincerity of Christians. The Quran says that Christians by and large are sincere people, but they're misguided. Allah says in the Quran that you will find the closest in love, in support to the believers are those who say we are Christians. Why? That is because they have righteousness and they have piety and they are not arrogant. And we find that true Christians People even in this day who follow corrupted Christianity, you generally find them to be humble. You find them to be loving people. You find them to be not arrogant. This is what the Quran says. So our stance, brothers and sisters, is that we believe we are the real followers of Jesus Christ. We believe we are following the teachings of Jesus. And we say to our fellow Christians that we want you to research what Jesus himself said. We want you to study the true teachings of Jesus. And if you do so, then you will also conclude that Jesus never taught the Trinity. 
Jesus never taught that he is divine. Jesus never taught that you should disobey the law. He was a Jew and he practiced the Mosaic law and he was circumcised and he never told you to disobey the law of Moses. And this is our perspective of Jesus. That is Jesus, the son of Mary, the word of truth about which they are in dispute. It is not befitting for God to take a son, exalted is he. When he decrees an affair, he only says to it, be and it is. And Jesus said, and indeed, God is my Lord and your Lord. So worship him. That is a straight path. Before going to the life of the last messenger, we have to discuss some of the stories mentioned in Quran and Hadith. The first one is the story of the people of the cave. Inshallah, we have an appointment with that until we meet again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.